Good morning. Is anybody home? <laughs> Good morning. Oh, I swallowed wrong. Is anybody home? Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the kitchen of Love and Light, where I, your host, Tani Rowe, am half dressed. <laughs> Why? Because I just got up. No, because it, it, please, friends, it's 620. I, I've been up for two and a half hours, really three. <laughs> what are y'all doing? Hello from Tuscany. Where is that? Y'all know I never leave this town. I really don't. But I was just thinking about something. How do you monitor your water? I bet most people are not drinking as much water as they think they are, and they run around feeling like um, feeling like they're hungry, but a lot of times they're just thirsty, feeling lethargic, feeling angry, feeling, and a lot of times they're just dehydrated. Do y'all monitor? Um, hey, Trudy, how are you? Do y'all monitor your water? I, did, I just thought I'd pop on. I have a, some early morning coaching. I'm talking to um, Marcy, and then I'm talking to... Who else am I talking to? Somebody else. And then I've got Amy. And then I'm doing something exciting. I'm going to be part of this thing called the Raw Food Mastery Summit with Karen and Rick Dina are the host. And they asked me before. I'm agreeing to do it this year. So I have my interview today. And they're just going to be asking me a lot of questions that I am going to be answering to the best of my ability. You know, when you're going to do something like that, you really don't, um, you don't have to be anxious. You don't have to, you just show up as yourself, you know, doing your own dang thing because nobody can be Tanny but Tanny, right? What are y'all doing today? Do y'all have anything um, you want to chat about? You're bad at monitoring it. Hey, Susie. Well, let me show you something I was just thinking about. First of all, you see my big Berkey water system over there and on my cutting board, which normally sit here where I'm sitting. And, um, and I told Christopher not to sit here because I hear it crack when he gets up here, but I think because he weighs like 20 pounds more than me that, that I can still sit here. Really, it's just funny because Christopher weighs the whopping 143 pounds and, um, you know, he's six foot four, so he's quite the lightweight, but I keep on telling him, bringing him down to the gym, that he's intimidated by his mother's strength and agility in the gym. He said, no, I'm just lazy, mom, but he has like the broad shoulders. He gets that from me, and um, anyway, I'm always telling him that too, because his father has kind of slump shoulders, you know. We're not talking about him this morning. It's way too early for that. <laughs> anyway, so, um, okay, so you see my Berkey water filter, and this is a great thing you can do. Now, this container right here came from this place in Greenville, South Carolina, called um, Garner's, but you can buy, like, their alkaline water or something. Well, they have these on sale for $3.99, and you can fill it up with water. Who don't want that, right? But anyway, it's got a little top and everything, which don't panic. It's, that, that's plastic. You're not going to, like, suck on the plastic, okay? I understand the estrogen, I understand all that, okay? Don't suck on the plastic like you've been warmed. But um, here it is. This is a half gallon right here, 232 ounces. So you can fill this up once, drink it for all through the first of the day, fill it up again, and drink it through the rest of the day, and bam, you can send a gallon of water. Now, one thing I normally like to do, I, I have been using that, but I also have several systems that I do. Now, let's say I, um, I use my 32 ounce mason jar your normal size mason jar. Well, what a lot of times I'll do is I will have four of those out on the counter and I'll realize that's the water I'm gonna drink during the day. Other times, I will have three on the counter. When I get up on rise, I'm gonna tip back one of those. So I'm gonna already have chugged down a fourth of my water in the day, first thing, okay? And then I'm gonna fill up three more knowing that's the rest, right? So I've really only got three on the counter. Another thing you can do is you can get a hair scrunchie or a hair band, elastic, a rubber band, and you could put it, you could just have one 32 ounce jar out and then you could put it, um, put the bands, four bands on there 
down at the bottom and every time you fill it up you slide it up to the top do you see what i mean and by the end of the day you will have accomplished a gallon of water do i think everybody needs a gallon of water i don't know but i do to fill my optimum I've, I've tested that out many times over the years but i'll tell you what i do is when i have all that water out in the morning when i have a smoothie probably and preferably two times a day otherwise i'm going to have the the uh, items that I would have in my smoothie, but I'm gonna chew it, I'm gonna drink water, and I'm gonna shake and jump up and down to create a smoothie in my tummy, you know? So it's a smoothie either way. But anyway, so what you want to do is, or I wanna do is have my gallon of water out, for example, or if I'm gonna fill this up first, first in the day. See, I would have already consumed 32 ounces of this, so I would already be down halfway, right? So then with my smoothies, I will be drinking about 32 ounces in each one, 32, I mean 16 ounces, so 16 plus 16 is 32. So by, by after lunch, you've already consumed half a gallon of water, and you see I'm measuring that water out of my water stipend or supply during the day. Does that make sense, or is that confusing at 6 in the morning? Is anybody picking that up? Let me see what y'all are saying. Y'all want to talk about anything else? I just thought I'd hop on because I was waiting on... um. You've got a seven-day raw vegan challenge starting on Monday. That is awesome. Don Don, V-Gang. You know, um, on your challenge, is this, is this new for you? Um, raw vegan challenge, how do you eat now? Do you have a plan? Do you map that out ahead of time? Because a lot of times when you're changing over your lifestyle or you, your diet, you know, your brain can want to go to the set point, you know, which is its default setting, the easy setting, which isn't always the right thing. A lot of times you'll hear people say, oh, you can you can listen to your body. You can, well, you know, if, if you're a nicotine addict, meaning you're a smoker and you try to quit smoking, guess what your body's gonna say? Excuse me, I need to smoke. Does your body really need nicotine or are you an addict? Well, people have a low grade chemical addiction to the very real chemicals in the food they ate, eat. I mean the toys, right? I tell you what's sad is we need to get our health in check. You know, we got a country that, that we've got people more so than ever with disturbances in their body, mind, soul, and spirit. You know, that, that have been raised on toxic trash, junk food. We got a, a society of people that, um, you know, are, are all addicted to the pharmaceutical meds they're on. We don't understand, you know, we're, we're living at um, the mercy of the approval of social media and comparing ourselves to what everybody else puts out in the world, which is only the highlight reel of their dang life, right? We need to start putting in our body what we need, nourishment. You know what I mean? We need to start start noticing people. We need to start listening and stop just waiting till they shut up so we can get our word in. We need to have empathy, not just sympathy. We need to understand that love matters. You know? Not just, um, yeah, that there's a lot of things going on and, and putting good things in your body, everything you put in your body matters. Do you know? Fellow South Carolinian, hello, Parker Vegan. <laughs> you know, my mom, when I was a kid, she was a third grade teacher, and uh, there was this show that came on. I don't know if you're as old as me, but um, it was called Sam Lapper's Corner, and it was all about South Carolinians, and there was a song that went with it, and all her third graders, they, they got to watch that on ETV, educational television, and it went, uh, we are good sand lappers, yes, we're good sand lappers, and we're mighty proud to say that we live, yes, we live in the very fine state of the USA. <laughs> I'm sorry, you tuned in and it is not my fault. <laughs> oh, me. What else do y'all have to say this morning? Yeah, 
I can talk about organic versus regular produce. You know what, you do the best you can, and I really try to avoid a lot of the dirtiest, most pesticide-laden and holding foods, like berries, for example. I always buy berries and celery organic. Celery is one of those things that you can, a lot of pesticides and herbicides you can't wash off, but uh, conventional celery immediately makes my tongue, my gums, and my throat swell up. Um, I'm not a scientist, but that ain't good, okay? <laughs> so, and then berries are the same thing. They're like little um, poison sponges, you know? And so I always buy things like that, but other things like bananas, I don't always get those organic. Um, what else? Um, avocados, things like that. But I do the best I can. I try to buy my greens organic. You know, I try to peel my produce, things like that. Um, but really, you know, we do the best as we can, right? And, and that's not to say, well, you know, I can't afford that or whatever, but you need to pay your power bill too. I mean, it's a thing. Like, we can say, oh, well, that's just making an excuse all day, but you, you need to have power. I mean, maybe you don't. I do, though, because it gets cold here in South Carolina. Though yesterday, we had an unseasonable day and a warm day, and I was out there, sun's out, skin's out, and I was soaking up the rays. What else do y'all want to say? Yeah, the dirty dozen, which changes sometimes too, did you know? The weather was great, Parker Vegan. It was beautiful. I tell you what else is sad is if you go over to my daughter's Instagram, she's Mountain Mommy. She um she and Griffin, my grandson, who is four and a half, and their dog Fern. This is the best dog. She adopted him from somebody that was going to get rid of him. They had had a child, and they just couldn't manage it, okay? The dog is like crate trained. It, it, hello, I need to go out and potty. It's like the greatest guard dog. It's a huge dog. It's some kind of mixed breed. It, um, to me, it looks like it has some kind of, uh, like a blue tick hound type. Um, she told me like the mix, but anyway, it's a great dog, and his name is Fern. And the dog, the dog doesn't. It's not gonna allow you to say it's got a girl name. This is a big dog, okay? Like, see, I my dogs are small, you know, and I like a shed free version. But my daughter, not so much. It doesn't bother her. I'm like, why is there your? Why is your dog's hair in my convertible? Why is Fern's hair on the roof of my car, Carly? Why she's like. I don't know, is that a problem? Like, like, yes! <laughs> anyway, because Griffin rode in my car and he probably had some fern hair on him. But anyway, they went half a mile down the road, one way from her house, and then half a mile down the other way. Don't stress if you're my mother saying, well, was anybody watching Griffin? Of course she was watching him, okay? Stop panicking. My daughter is the epic mom of all times, the best mom. So anyway, they picked up all this trash and Griffin is on her page going and it was like two giant tra trash bags and this was only like what they could reach. I mean, they only had two bags with them. And Fern, the dog, has this new like carry satchel like you think of a um, St. Bernard that, you know, carries the whiskey, but they don't drink. I mean, Griffin doesn't need to bring his whiskey. He needed to bring like, I don't know what he needed to bring, but... But like if they go hiking, Carly can put her, her keys in there or whatever, their snack or... So anyway, Fern had on the backpack. And, uh, but you should see all that trash. People trashing up the world. Because you know what? People can't see past their own wants and needs at that moment. It's like nobody cares about anything anymore, but we can. We can care and we can make a difference in this world. You know? I'm 46. My face looks like it needs to be powdered. I'm just noticing that. Oh, me. Your dog is, is vegan now? He's a big pity. What's that? A, a pit bull? I want to think that Fern has some pit bull. I'm not sure, but um. anyway, again, if your mom, my, my mom don't panic, okay? Like, she likes to worry about things. Anyway, um, yes. My dogs have been eating um, vegan dog food for years. My maxi dog, he is, uh, 
I want to think he's about 14. I got him when Cardi was in second grade, and she'll be 22 soon. And um, so he's that old, and that dog has never had one health problem. He had this thing, kind of this, um, I thought a spider bit him or something down here on his neck.